going on, man? Whoa, what's that? Is that yours? Bro, I got a story to tell you. Oh boy. So what's the story? I didn't know you had an iMac. Who's Missy Love? Not important. What's, what happened, man? Remember that boutique that I met over here at the Domino's Pizza? The one that had like that back hair? Yes. Got it. And I said, you know, I don't judge. As long as they want that love, I give them the loving. So we just got done making a video. You know, I decided to say, hey, I can edit here on the computer. Um, this thing was taking forever. Mm. We're waiting there, smooching. I hear that damn door crack. I looked down, it was like a steel toe boot, and I knew. <laughs> Wait, was she married? <laughs> Yo, when I meet these girls, that, that conversation never comes up. Yeah. She's single when she's with you. Yes. This is why care. you're the wife's boyfriend. Yes. I wasn't waiting around for nothing. I yanked the thing off the power cord. I put my uh, my cowboy shorts on. I left my socks behind, but I got the hell up out of there. So you need an SSD in here. Yes. Lupe's problem is incredibly common with these 2012 to 2020 Retina iMacs that have pretty decent specs, but are being held back by their slow mechanical hard drives. Replacing these drives with a SATA SSD or NVMe if it has the slot makes a world of difference. And even though some of these older iMacs won't officially take newer versions of Mac OS, you can always use Open Core Legacy Patcher to install a newer Mac OS if you want to increase the lifespan of the last upgradable iMac model and thereby saving it from the dumpster. And jokes aside, I'm making this video because I really like this gen of Retina iMacs. They're the last ones that are upgradable with a SATA slot, an NVMe slot, and upgradable RAM. And when you combine it with the fact that you can grab them for super cheap on eBay, it's a tempting deal for someone who just needs something basic and reliable. But now, it's time to get to work. How long have I known you, Lupe? 16 years. That's how long I've known you. And in 16 years, I have never let you down, and I'm not gonna let you down today. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna replace this HDD with an SSD, so that this never happens again. This thing has to be fast enough for you to be able to- The pump and go. Pump and go. And I guess we'll record this for, for those of you at home, how to do this yourself, in case you ever end up in the same situation as Lupe here. These iMacs are sealed, so you cannot replace the hard drive without opening it up. It's scary. You can break things very easily. So for today's upgrade, we're gonna use a one terabyte SSD. We don't need top of the line stuff because this thing is barely used. Lupe sounds like he just uses it for a little bit of video editing occasionally. Probably an Excel spreadsheet of all his, his dates and his wives. So to keep a... Uh... I can't even remember my own phone number. <laughs> I don't know how you can remember thousands. So we're gonna take this pizza cutter. Shout out to all my Italian subscribers. And uh, get, a, get a close up, get a close up of this one. So I'm gonna stick it in this crack. That's what he said, yeah. I'm gonna rub it back and forth so that it's in. Back and forth, and then slowly. And what I'm doing here, I'm cutting the adhesive like Lupe cuts ties with women. You wanna skip over this because you don't wanna hit the webcam. All right, that's starting to come out. Now that the adhesive has been cut, it's time to carefully pull the screen off the frame, holding it nice and tight so it doesn't slip, fall, and hire a lawyer to sue me. But before it comes out entirely, we need to disconnect these two cables, which are a little tricky to do if you don't have tiny raccoon-like fingers like me. Bring it down, and it disconnects just like that. And then you want to put it flat on something soft. And this is it. This is the hard drive. As you can see, it's a 2.5 inch HDD. Now be very careful. Very, very, very careful of this. You see that? This is the power supply. This still has electricity in it. If you touch it with your hands, you have the potential of electrocuting yourself. You probably won't die. I don't know, you can tr I can't say that. YouTube will pay <laughs> My son fucking electrocuted his balls. And even if you have gloves on, you don't wanna risk it because if you have a hole in your glove, I have a little hole in my glove here, and you, you touch it, it's not good because it can- ah! You don't want that to happen to you. So that's why you don't touch that power supply, because not all of you can respawn like I can. While I slowly get my HP back to normal, we already have the screen off, so it's a good time to dust it out. And though these iMacs rarely overheat, they do collect some gooch like everything else. It also gives me an excuse to try out this little jet blower I bought the other day. Now the most common spots are the bottom vents right here, and the rear vent here. And of course the main fan. Sweet lord, this thing is powerful. Let me know if you'd be interested in buying one of these, I might start stocking them in the store. And while we're out here, we might as well take a little break to kick back and relax. 
Ow! Hey, did you see that uh, Apple's coming out with an upgradable iMac this year? Where'd you see that? I seen it on the website. On the web? Did you check the sources? Yeah, my eyes. This here, folks, is the problem with information being released faster than it can be verified. Well, how come that's coming up on my news feeds? See, algorithms dictate what information we're even shown in the first place, and it's probably just feeding you whatever you want to see to keep you scrolling forever. Who wouldn't want an upgradable iMac? I hear you, Lupe, but I also know how difficult or overwhelming it can be to find information that's trustworthy. Which is why I'm glad I get my news from Ground News. Founded by a former NASA engineer, their app and website gather related articles from around the world and add important context so you know where your information is actually coming from. All their ratings are backed by independent organizations and operated by an independent team around the world that believe in the mission. So basically, Ground News weeds out the bullshit so you don't have to. For example, let's look at how the media is reacting to Google's new AI features on their latest Pixel phone. Every story comes with a quick summary based on all the sources they found reporting on it, and visual breakdowns of their political bias and how credible their reporting tends to be, all factors that can influence the way a story is framed. Like Business Standard reporting these new features will erode trust in everything, while the Irish Examiner calls these upgrades sleek, smart, and top tier. As you can see, getting your news on here gets you way more insight than any one article ever could. So I love staying up to date on all things tech and AI with Ground News. But whatever you're interested in, they do a great job at helping us verify information, think critically, and form independent opinions. And it's for exactly that reason that I decided to take on Ground News as a sponsor. I don't have time for opinions or bias. I want facts, and their system makes it so much easier to find them compared to endlessly digging through Google. But don't just take my word. Check them out for yourself at ground.news textbirds and use my link to save 40% on the same Vantage plan I use for unlimited access to all these features I just showed you. But break time is over, so back to the shop. Now that we're nice and clean and free of dust, four screws. Now these screws are different sizes. Make sure that you keep track of what went where. See, different sizes. So make sure you keep track. The greatest technician that's ever lived. And don't do that. Thank you, Lupe. My back. My back. This comes out. It has a little condom on it. This guy's still holding it in. So you have to, that comes out. So now that it's loosened, out goes the hard drive. And this is it. I am going to reuse this. So I'm just going to crack it just like I crack my Bick. I'm gonna put on the new SSD. Nice and snug ski. Plug it back in. And now this is the worst part of this whole repair, is removing this old adhesive because it takes forever. So I'm gonna use my little tool here. Oh. Oh. So first I'm gonna start scraping right here and you can start pulling. Uh, now these ones are the biggest pain in the ass. The Wi-Fi cables, it always rips. So you might be able to start it right here and then it will rip on the Wi-Fi cable. You gotta be fucking kidding me. That's never happened to me in my entire life. It's always ripped on the Wi-Fi cable. Let's see if it happens right here. Gently. I am, I should record this every time. I've never been able to get it first try on the Wi-Fi cable, that's crazy. You see these little black streaks? That's leftover adhesive, you have to clean that because the new adhesive won't stick to this. And uh, how do you clean that? 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Now that the frame's done, you need to remove the adhesive strips from the screen itself. You need to use a plastic spudger. I say this because this adhesive right here is on a thin plastic film. I don't know if the camera can even pick that up, but there's a thin film on the glass itself, and that's what the adhesive is mounted to. That's what it's attached to. So if you use a metal spudger, you can scratch through that, and it'll show up on the screen. You'll scratch the paint off the screen. Now we need to put on new adhesive strips. I'm not gonna waste your time showing you how to do this. Okay, this is the scariest part besides cutting open the, the computer. This is the scariest part. You should have something right here because if the screen drops, you want it to, to hit right here. Also, do you see this? See how it does this? They make a tool to stop the iMac from moving up and down like this when you're trying to work on it. I don't need that tool, uh, but it might make your life easier. I'm gonna line it up. Fucking bitch. Starting with the bottom. So I got that left corner in, I got the right corner in, and if it's lined up, you'll feel that it's flush. I'm still gonna hold it, because now I'm gonna have to plug in these cables, which is a pain in the ass. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do the bottom one first, and you see how little space you have to work with? It's hard to even get it on camera. I got it in, and now I'm gonna click the connector. That might be difficult for a lot of you. 
I've done it a million times, so it's easy for me to slip it in. Giggity. And then this one, again, you just slide it in, push it back. Make sure the webcam does not have any debris on it because you won't be able to remove it. So I'm gonna check the webcam, webcam looks good. I get a rag and I'm gonna pinch while I go all around the frame. I'm pinching the frame so that the adhesive sticks to it. And that's it. Now that the fun part is over, it's time to work our software magic by booting into our Catalina USB, wiping the drive using disk utility, and installing the OS before plugging the HDD into our SATA to USB adapter so we can migrate over all of Lupe's saxophone tapes. And we come back the next day. Looks like that's finally finished. Well, hello there. Hello, hello. Oh, looking dapper. You Look like? at that, huh? Yo, I think I found the one, man. Fine little thing behind the counter. Little or big? Uh. Good size. Okay. She asked me how I wanted my coffee. Yep. I asked her, uh, coffee is good with cream, but better when it's black. <gasps> Woo wee! <laughs> you know, one thing led to another. What do you see there? What is that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you just stepped in when uh, I was getting ready to just reset the PRAM on this bad boy. Perfect timing. Because once after you replace the hard drive, it's always good to reset the PRAM. So I'm going to have to press uh, a few keys. I have a Windows keyboard here. Windows, Alt, P, and R. Right, so I'm gonna press the power button real quick. Boom, press power button, hold it quick. Quick, 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 quick. Look at those pale hands. I need some vitamin D. These nuts. Yep, hold it, and then you saw that, it went black. That means PRAM is being reset. And then you will hear the beauty of Steve Jobs' ghost. <laughs> and then, just like that, you can see it, it boots up nice and quick. All right. And that's it, so it's uh, a lot faster than it was. Last but not least is opening up terminals so we can use the force trim command to make sure this SSD stays nice and healthy, because sometimes Apple doesn't enable it by default on aftermarket SSDs. And you have yourself a fast iMac. That's the, the easiest up, I shouldn't say it's the easiest. That's the best upgrade you can do on these older iMacs. Get rid of that HDD and use an SSD. Now that your old HDD is out, you can use this as a backup drive or just put it in a drawer somewhere and keep it safe so that you have a copy of all the stuff as of the day that you did the upgrade. That's it. You guys want educational videos? This is, uh, this is the most educational you're gonna get. Now I guess a good question is, is it even worth it? And that depends on how much money you are willing to spend. So this is a late 2012 iMac, eight gigs of RAM, one terabyte HDD, I think. Yeah, and now it's a one terabyte SSD. The SSD costs, what, $80, something like that. It, it'll probably go down, probably be like 60 bucks soon. The labor, of course, you know, is a little uh, a little tough. Adhesive costs 13 bucks, if that. The adapter costs nine bucks or something like that. So if you're willing to do the work yourself, yeah, it's gonna be worth it because it's nowhere near as expensive as buying a new iMac. And these iMacs still look really nice. They look really nice. The screen looks nice. It's a 1080p screen, so it's not like 4K or anything. It can only take Catalina, but you can use OpenCore Legacy Patcher to get it uh, to run the newer versions of of uh, the Mac OS so that you can kind of get around that compatibility issue. I mean, these things can be found for pretty cheap. I think it's worth it. If you're not using it for anything crazy, you're just using it for word processing or spreadsheets or just something basic, web browsing. Maybe your mom, your grandmother, something like that has it. Uh, it's, it's, worth, it's worth fixing or, or upgrading it. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave your number for Lupe below. <laughs>